Good morning, everybody. I'm back again. Today I wanted to talk about the Hoover. The Hoover, the narcissistic Hoover. So they're going to be coming back because they can never stay away forever. But it may not be today. It may be in a few months. It could be in a year. It could be in a few years. But they're coming back. And I want to discuss why they're coming back. They're not coming back because they love you. They're coming back because they need you. And they also are coming back because they own you. Right? That's what they believe anyway. Those fools. In their foolishness, they believe they own you. And a lot of times, we would act and operate like they did. Had free reign to do what they wanted. Because they got in our emotional field and they tore it to pieces. You know? They uh, ripped it to shreds. But anyway, now that we're healed and we're healing, we're on a healing journey and we're also on this healing journey, we are understanding the psyche of the narcissist, right? And this is a big deal. And this is why I started this channel. It's because I wanted y'all to understand the psyche of the narcissist. Now, we know they're dealing with demons, but also there is stuff going on and these tracks to where we're able to understand what they're thinking and for me it was huge in my success as far as my healing go went because i dealt with a number of these somebody asked one day i actually think it was on tiktok but they asked like you know is mine from experience or just studying and mine has been, you know, uh, from both, really. But mine started from just the same thing you guys. Uh, it, it was experience, y'all. I've been with so many of them growing up in a meshed, in a meshment of the family unit first, not knowing what, what it was I was dealing with. I didn't know how to explain it to people. You know, a lot of times they would say, well, you're not a, a family man or something, you know. And I didn't even know how to answer that when I would say, I just don't hang out with my family anymore. Uh, I didn't even know to tell them how destructive it was because I couldn't really, you know, they say like the way the narcissist acts and operates, it's, it's, um, it's kind of like, uh, it's not sadistic. It's, uh, well, it is sadistic, but it's, it, it's, it's, it's it's slow the way the operation of it works and, and it hits every category and area of your life so it's hard to explain to people you know how how it works and, and until you know it's nice when you're able to put a title to it and also uh that you know that that all the symptoms line up with the title uh, meaning the diagnoses and so you know because I would say a lot of different things, you know, they're self-righteous, it's one way, their way, or the highway, and you're walking on eggshells, and you're stressed out, and then you walk away, and you're, you're having to deal with their negative energy for a week, you're trying to shake it off, because they were throwing it on me, I didn't know, so all this kind of stuff, and, you know, they're just very destructive, so I had experience just first through the family, and then also from uh, my ex-wife, love partner, nine years, uh, borderline. Then I had just several narcissists after that. You know, some weren't very long, uh, and, you know, some were. And some were several cycles long, you know, of years. that took up years of time. I call them cycles because it would be like, Three months on, three months off, three months on, three months off, three months on, three months off. And that's kind of how one of them went for years. And then I had the sociopath. And, you know, until I was shook to an awakening from the trauma, y'all. And so for me, what I was passionate about is, is if I can help people out there understand the way they tick, the way they think. Uh, and it brings healing to an individual and it helps you to uh, break that trauma bond much faster if you can 
understand these things because if you understand that they're playing with you or that they're so sadistic and you know uh you know and they're out for your blood man and that's it it makes things so easy to so much so much easier to understand uh and and so much easier to break contact with them it's still difficult but you know understanding of thinking so when it comes to the hoover they're going to come back for different reasons you know some some one of the reasons is because of their their board and you know the the supply that they have is just not you know doing it for them and they really get bored with everybody uh another reason why they would hoover you is because like i said they own you they've been with you before and they feel like that they have rights to you so they can just come and go as they please so if it's your time on the rotation they just feel like they can just come back and own you again and we know that that's the way they think right in ownership but uh you know that's why you gotta make sure that you don't let them back in because when you do take them back you do uh reinforce that they have ownership or whatever they're thinking is it just it just makes them believe it more and it, 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 it you know it could make you believe these types of things more too or feel stuck you know you know you're only stuck until uh you you decide to say no you know i mean that's the thing and that you know there's an addiction that comes with that trauma bond right with through your endocrine system so yeah, it doesn't feel good to break it off with a narcissist, but you gotta understand the longer you stay with them, the more that you are gonna be uh, attached to that addiction, the harder it is to break. Because they run you down and they uh, increase that addiction to where the longer that you are dealing with the addiction, at some point in time, you're gonna feel like uh, if it goes long enough, you're gonna believe that that's all you know, you know, and that's really hard then. It's kind of like anything uh, addiction related, smoking, drinking, anything, drugs, whatever, sex, porn, you know, shopping, gambling, I don't know. It's all, the longer you do it without breaking that, without digging in and saying, hey, I'm gonna stop this, it's gone too far. Or it's not accentuating my life anymore. Uh, now it's affecting it all in negative ways. You know, and that's the thing with some situations where when people decide to stop them, it's because, you know, whatever it is, whether it was an addiction or not, it was just, it doesn't accentuate my life anymore. It doesn't make me a better person anymore. Now it's making me worse. And when you get to that point, you need to stop. And, you know, if you can't put something down, that means you need to put it down because you got a problem. And so, just keep in mind, and with the narcissist, it's, you always want to put them down. They need to be put down. You need to let go of them on the first date <laughs> if you can because it'll be much easier. Uh, but anyway, uh, so they're going to come back when they feel like they, you know, it's your turn because it's a cycle. It's a cycle they're running. But you got to address it and say no, you know, and then maybe it doesn't feel so good. But it will get you, th you need to get through those hard places in life so that you can get onto the greener pastures that are, um, you know, out there for you. Or else you're going to be in the gutter with them. And, you know, every day you're with them, you're making bad decisions. But uh, also, they're going to come back because they have nobody. They got into an argument with their last supply and nobody else will take them back. You know, because they've treated everybody so poorly. And nobody's ready or not to take them back. Or nobody's got any fuel. And you're still lingering out there. You know, so they may come back for that. And, you know, depending on... You know, this is the thing you've been... You've been trained a certain way. We all have. We all have uh, 
these training wheels so the bicycle doesn't fall over, right? They put them on your bicycle and, you know, it's kind of like, uh, you need to knock them things off, man. Because uh, if you gotta fall down and get up a couple of times, man, you don't want them training wheels on that the narcissist put on your bicycle, man. You know, you wanna keep it moving, whatever it takes. You wanna, you wanna learn to keep that bicycle on its two wheels, man, so that it does, uh, and knock them, uh, tra training wheels off. That's how they do, man. They will, uh, they will, they will really, uh, keep you and hold you down and bring you back to, uh, the version of a, a baby if you let them. They want you so codependent upon them, uh, that you know if you leave it up to them you'll you, like i said one time you'll have so much anxiety you won't be able to go to the mailbox without them you won't be able to collect the mail without them because you'll be so anxious and you'll be second guessing yourself so much so you know they everything they do in humanity is backwards and everything they do in regards to your life is going to be uh bringing you backwards it's kind of like if you're trying to run and they have like a a hook tied to the back of your shirt and you know they're reeling you in on, on a with a crane or something it's like you're trying to run and you can't run nowhere you're getting pulled back that's how they are with your life in regards to your life generally speaking uh but you know they're they're gonna come back when they start to stalk you and they see that uh <laughs> You know, you're smiling, happy, and getting on with your life. You Maybe you're seeing somebody else. They don't like that either. Because that means somebody else is out there getting their supply, damn it. They can't have that. You know, because uh, they want every ounce of supply that they can get. Because they're jealous. They're jealous of your fuel. Especially if you got good fuel, that good, good. The good goodness, baby. You know. They want to get them hugs. You know, get that love and and then uh, then they want to toss you out with the trash, you know, and smile on the way out like I did it again. I did it again to you. And, um, you know, you can't really blame them if you keep taking them back like that. You either respect yourself or not, but you can't be hooked to that trauma bond anymore. You know, you got to let it go. You know what they're dealing with, you know, uh. It's the weirdest thing, but the, the stalking thing. I kind of woke up in a nightmare last night uh, dreaming about one time when I caught her stalking me with them eyes, man, that, that, that assassin stare. It's the craziest stuff. I had a couple of bad nightmares last night about the narcissist, I have to be honest with you. And I don't have nightmares anymore. I, haven't, I don't have dreams, really, generally speaking. But yeah, they're going to come back. It was weird. I had a few of them. I don't know if it was something to do with the narcissist really thinking about me or something in a weird way. Or an attack. <laughs> it's weird. Because I don't really have those. I've only had like one one or two dreams in the last God, two or three years. Uh, anyway, yeah, they're going to come back when they see you smiling. They see that, you know, your, your fuel's up. See, if you're happy, if you're with someone, they're going to want to, like, take you out from under that individual, that new uh, love partner, boyfriend, girlfriend you got. They're going to try to break that up. Uh, break that up and get fuel off it or break it up and get you back out of it. Either one, whatever, whatever they can do. And if you're happy, uh, they're going to come back and try to scoop you up. They'll tell you anything. Trust me, man. I've been through all of them anything but usually the last one is they had some sort of epiphany where the, they've seen the light and they've changed they'll be doing everything you want them to do for like a little while then things will go right back to you know fifth gear into uh, demolition derby <laughs> um but you know that's the thing I, and like i said i talked about a few podcasts ago where you know god um you know, you can't play with God and the, and the rules to God, you know. So sometimes you think you can, 
you know, maybe go back to the narcissist for a little while, just play around with them and then break up with them and, and you know, get your little fill. But the problem with that is, is God knows your heart and God knows what you're doing, what you're thinking. And there's no easy way out because God has rules built into this. And when you go back to the narcissist, even for a short time, you're being, you know, disobedient, you know, to him and, uh, and you have to catch that, that reaping what they're sowing has got to come back to you too, because you're a part of it when you start to connect yourself to them again. And and trust me, when you know what you're dealing with, this is the thing, when you know you're dealing with devils and you go back to them even for a short time, man. See, it's one thing when you didn't know any better, but when you know better, whoo, that's when you really get that reaping. You can go back to a narcissist. Uh, that's why, I mean, I wouldn't dare do it just for the reaping. Because I, I, if I just went back to her for one day and then broke up with her two days, man, the reaping, the harvest that I would receive, the negative harvest that God would put me through for that, it ain't worth it. Because they flip that energy on you, man, whether you like it or not. Because uh, you'll get it, uh, generally speaking, through, if this is usually through it will be if you're not going to give it to him through energy you're going to get it through six so but but please y'all that's where you're going to reap a bad harvest and it will get slapped on you boy gotta let you have it especially when you know you're not supposed to be with them because you know what you're dealing with and you're one of god's chosen and then you decide oh, i'm gonna go back to him even though they're a devil that don't work y'all you're gonna get it hard and you'll feel it the repercussions boy and then you know i mean he'll have you feel it every which way financially relationship wise with friendships family whatever i mean every every which way you're gonna feel it to where your health everything and the recovery time is longer when you're being disobedient God makes you take it. To, I mean, he'll make you gain. You may gain 15 pounds out of that one day with the narcissist. <laughs> That's part of your part of your reaping what they're sowing, and <laughs> you're sowing it with them, or you're reaping it with them. So, anyway, stay away from the Hoover today. Today's a a nice day. I had a kind of a bad day yesterday. I was a little a little out of sorts, but um, I'm back. It's glorious. God's good every day. And it's nice out. So enjoy your day. And if you're down, get your vitamins. Get your walk in. Get a little bit of that meditation, even if it's 15 minutes. Just time to yourself. Quiet time to lay there. No distractions. Just thinking about goodness and things that arise just let it go it's good it's good for healing okay love y'all and till next time soldier peace i'm out